From Hollywood. What are you proposing? It's simple. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's all part of the plan. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And look at this story. This one coming to you from the CBS television station in Miami. Says here the recession is leaving some doctor's offices empty. More women are putting motherhood on hold and recent reports show contraceptive sales are through the roof. The data runs about two years behind, so we won't know for sure until 2011. But it appears that with the economic slowdown has come something of a pregnant pause. Says here, we all know that children are not cheap. It's a labor of love, says one parent. Many prospective parents are changing their plans when it comes to pregnancy. Planned Parenthood has seen an increase in patients. But they say economic effect is more because of lost jobs and health care. Carl Halbe, demographer with the Population Reference Bureau, who says the birth rate does appear to fall with economic declines, said that after the most recent recession in the early 1990s, the birth rate declined steadily through 1997, where it held relatively strong through 2006, the latest data available through the CDC, Centers for Disease Control. After the Great Depression and the 1970s gas shortage, the nation saw record lows in birth rates. Isn't it amazing that women know how to use birth control when they think they might get caught holding the handbag, having to pay for that little crumb cruncher? Says here there are reports that health care facilities are offering free contraceptives and are seeing more taken. And that OBGYNs are seeing less business. Lisette Rodriguez, a mother of a five-year-old, says no more kids. Data on birth rates today isn't the only trend suspected of changing. Although numbers aren't yet available, adoption and abortion rates could be figuring uh, uh, to draw, to decline as well. So not only will people have less kids, but they're less likely to adopt. And they are more likely to abort. All of this makes sense. And it goes back to something I've said recently. I've said it more than once. You know, you have to look at kids as a line item in your budget. I don't care how much of a joy you think they are, how much of a blessing it is from God. Kids are expensive. They are an expense. And if you're out of work, don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself with biblical scripture or with words from your priest or whoever. Don't kid yourself that somehow God will provide. God ain't providing crap. You can't afford to have a kid. You shouldn't be having a kid. And that's it. Country is broke. We don't need you on welfare, food stamps, unemployment. You know what? We need you to man and woman up, sack up, as it were. Children cost over the period of their youth and adolescence up to adulthood, they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands. And uh, this is not a good time to be having kids. That's it. End of story. Put a cork in it. You know, put a, put a rubber on. Do something. you got to prevent pregnancies at a time when your job is uncertain, country is uncertain. This is not the time to be having babies. Am I wrong about that? Come on, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, now with fewer commercials, 
fewer commercial interruptions. And, of course, taking more telephone calls faster than ever before. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's 1-800-5800-866. They say the birth rates are falling, adoption rates are falling, abortion rates are increasing because of the lousy economy. I say, great. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Aaron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, man? Great. Hey, I just want to call and tell you what a great job you're doing, and, uh, want to tell you i just broke up with my girlfriend about a week ago we were together for about two and a half years and uh you know it it sucked really bad you know um and she just insisted on having kids she wanted to have at least three kids and i'm like there's no way no way we could have kids look at the economy i mean i i've been at my job for like eight years but you know things are starting to get rough you know and i don't know where i'm gonna be you know next month you know or maybe even next week i mean you just hear things going to the grapevine with everyone else in the company you know uh getting cut yeah it's not a good idea so i uh i had to let her go tom I had to let her go how did she react when you dumped her oh man she uh she she was heartbroken man she was upset but she wouldn't she wouldn't give in she wouldn't say okay you know what we could work on things she just you know stood her ground she wanted good. To have kids Good. And I'm like, no. No, I'm glad she stood her ground. She should go out and find somebody uh, who wants to get her pregnant in these uncertain financial times we live in. Exactly. Let them deal with it. Right. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Hey, can you take me out old school? Yes. Yes, I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing Okay. Couldn't agree with you more and this article you read, man. I work at a medical facility and I see patients every day complaining how they don't get enough welfare and enough uh, money for their food. And if they have two, three kids and pregnant with another. It's just some we don't need to be paying for. That's my whole point. We don't need to be paying for them. That, that certainly, uh, you don't need to be paying for them. Uh, why would you want to impregnate somebody now? Since most people are uncertain about the future, uncertain about their finances. Yes, yeah, so many people are just in denial and they say children are a blessing and that, uh, you know, you can't see them as a cost or a burden. Well, guess what? That is exactly what they are. I agree 100% and I'm glad to see that people are being a little more responsible about this. So hopefully this trend continues. You and me both. Yeah, take me out, Kobe style, buddy. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Here we continue our conversation with Edward on the Tom Likas show. Dad, I need your help desperately about your uh, topic. It's funny how. Uh, this morning, I just spoke to my drummer, and uh, he got his cheating girlfriend pregnant. He got his cheating girlfriend pregnant? How could yeah. you have a cheating girlfriend? Well, what happened was, they got uh, about a week ago, he told me how he was uh, having a couple of... He was developing symptoms of pregnancy and yada, yada, yada. So, uh, sure enough, they do the blood test, uh, blood, uh, I mean, uh, pregnancy test. She comes out positive. Just last night, finds out that she was cheating on them. Wow. So, yeah, and uh, now he's telling me how, yeah, how he's never going to go back to her and blah, blah, blah. But um, I asked him, okay, well, what about the kid? Do you even know if it's yours? And he's like, well, if it's mine, then uh, I'm going to take care of it. And, uh, you know, it's a blessing from God. Oh, and just, which, stop. Exactly, exactly what you were saying. And he does not listen to me. I'm trying to convince him that, you know, maybe the, the coat hanger is probably the best, uh, you know, the best answer to his problem right now. Because what if the kid is not his? I, I also told him about one of the stories that you had mentioned before where the guy was paying the, the child support, and it wasn't even his kid, and his uh, wages were being garnished from his paychecks. Wow. So, uh, yeah, um, I don't know what to tell him. And uh, hopefully, I just asked him about 10 minutes ago to tune into a uh, new radio station, and uh, hopefully he does, and uh, hopefully I can get the message across from him and many other guys that are out there. Hopefully so. All right.
Alrighty, man. Can you uh, take me out travel south, please? I certainly can. Dave writes in and says, Tom, you hit it right on the head with your topic today. No one should be thinking about having kids in this economic environment. I am having a hard time convincing my wife of the same. She tells me that her clock is ticking and she's anxious to have a baby soon as she's approaching her mid-30s. We've been married for four years and look forward to having a child when the time is right. She is a great woman and a smart one, but this is one subject we don't see eye to eye. Right now, I am very leery of the economy and the current financial situation. Like you, I am conservative in my spending and have a nice nest egg in the bank for emergencies only. I would like to keep it that way, and when we do have a baby, I would like to be able to provide a comfortable life for my family. You are right on. These are definitely times to conserve and save. Thanks for telling it straight, Dad. Keep up the good work, Dave. There you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jacob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jacob. How you doing, Tom? Great. All right. I got a pretty depressing story for you. It's about my brother. And uh, he can't seem to get in his head that he shouldn't, he shouldn't be uh, going in without a rap. And so... Yeah, so he went to this New Year's Eve party, and he met some girl, and turns out she's got a kid, and she's a single mom, and I'm like, oh, you know, red flag right there, right? And I'm like, man, you need to start listening to Tom again. He stopped listening to you. I'm like, oh, come on, man. So anyway, I'm telling him, like, oh, you either hit it and quit it or nothing, you know? So uh, he's getting into it, and, like, he's like, oh, no, it's cool, man, and they're still, like, doing stuff. And she goes to Hawaii, and she's texting him from Hawaii, like, oh, I miss you, the beach reminds me of you, and all this other crap. And I'm just, like, shaking my head. There's, like, so many red flags in this relationship. Oh, my. Yeah. I've been double rapping ever since I lost my job, so. You got to. You got to. You got to double rap. It's like a, it's like a crunch rap. I mean, how are you going to pay for this? I don't know, Tom. I, I wouldn't risk it. I, think I triple it rapped in Vegas recently. Anybody having kids right now is crazy, unless you're rich. Absolutely. Hey, Tom, can you take me out of Riley style with machine gun? All right, Jacob, here you go. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Uh, f thing sucks. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Marcos on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Marcos. Hey, uh, well, no, I actually uh, disagree with what you're saying about... Uh, uh, well, I disagree with most advice you got to do. Uh, it has to do with uh, women and uh, family stuff. I, th I think you're very knowledgeable on everything else, but it, I, I haven't found one thing that I agree with you as far as... Uh, your, uh, your your advice to give to these guys so like what? Love and relationships. Well, for example, for example, like when you're talking about like uh, if you're uh, when you treat women like like you're saying like uh, you say things like like crap. Yeah, like uh, what you said. I didn't, but uh, yeah, when you say that, women don't like to be treated like that. It doesn't yeah, matter. Don't it, it doesn't matter whether they like it or not. I'm not saying they like it. I'm saying that they will give you what you want when you treat them like crap. Well, that's, that's what I was trying to get to. Of course, I enjoy uh, sex with uh, uh, people I don't really know. All that stuff. I mean, I'm a man. You know what I mean? But but you don't you don't go about it that way. As long as you if you want to get uh, why not? It works. But why not? It works. I don't think it works, uh, Tom. I mean, it might well, work you, don't you hear? Don't you hear all the guys? Don't know. you hear all the guys who call in here saying it works? Well, they, they're telling you that. You know what I mean? I mean, this. Oh, so kid, everyone I mean, who's think, calling in is lying. I say most people. Aren't. Don't you think they'd want to show me up? Don't you think they want to call in and say, "I tried your uh, rules. They don't work. You're an idiot." Don't you think they'd rather say that? Well, I don't know if you're a phone guy. We'll let them through. Of course we would. I I would much rather have people who hate me. We do entire hours with people who hate me. All right. No, I, don't I would much you. rather, be, I but I would I like much to rather talk. talk to people who disagree than people who agree. And you, you've heard, that. you have heard me talk to countless people who disagree with me. Why in the world would we not let somebody through? It's good radio. 
Okay, cool, cool. So my point is, if you hear all these guys calling up saying they get more ass than a toilet seat, you're, they're either all liars, or you don't believe me, and you think I'm a liar, and you think I'm screening out all the callers who don't agree with me, or maybe you're the odd man out. I really doubt it, Tom. I've done, done real good doing when I was out there single. I'm married now. But you're married now. Well, if you were doing that well, you wouldn't be married now. No, no, trust me, dude. I'm 34 years old, dude. So? I've been partying since I was a young guy. You know what I mean? I've so? been for 15 years. And I'll tell you what, if, I, if you let me. I, again, you're not going to tell me how to do the show. Okay, This is called a dialogue. All right. And I will speak when I like because it's my program. I heard that before, yeah. That's so you understand that no, uh, if, you had, done it, if you had done it right, you wouldn't be married today. So you think. So, you, I mean, that's what you, that's your, that's what you think. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, let me tell you this, though, dude. I mean, women do not like to be mistreated, and they give you. I didn't. I, I don't care if they like it. What I care about is what result I get. Exactly. And, and I, exactly. along with the guys who call in and say they're getting more ass than a toilet seat, all agree that when you treat a woman like crap, she comes back for more. It is the reason women are always crying about my boyfriend. The way he me. But that guy's getting laid. Oh, no, 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 there's no way, man. Oh, yeah, What's yeah, there? yeah. There's no way. Oh, yeah. You, man, you, you can't tell me that, Tom. Tom, I've been out there for since, you know, for the 15 years I was out there partying. Wow, 15 uh, whole weekend. years. I never Ooh, spent a dime. I never owned a home. I never had a nice car because I was always out there, you know, spending my money. And, uh, well, that's my point. Do you, first of all, you wouldn't, you, times a week, yeah? you wouldn't have been spending all your money if you followed my rules. You would have gotten laid. You wouldn't have spent all the money. You would have a house. You would have everything you want. Right now, drinks ain't free, dude. And when they, when women see you spend your money, dude, I'm telling you, dude, that's you know you make them laugh, you show them a good time. That's that's when you take them home, no, dude. I mean, no, you don't tell me no, way? you take them home and you spend nothing on them. You okay. take them home and you spent uh, enough to buy them enough drinks just to get drunk, one or two, oh, exactly. and out the door. Exactly, dude. But it's a numbers game, man. How you well, if you're broke that? after buying two drinks a day, you're not uh, as successful as you say you are. No, uh, that's. That's not what I'm saying. You know, I bought two drinks a day when I was in my 20s and 30s, and I still owned a house. I, I've owned five houses. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you make uh, way more money than I make. Uh, but I wasn't money. making that much money back then, is what I'm trying to tell you. And you own five houses with what kind of salary? No, I have owned five. I own two today. I've owned a total of five. Okay, understood. Well, I mean, I only, I only made about, uh, I said in the last 10 years, about 50000 between thousand dollars a year you know what i mean and mm -hmm. but I it gets expensive going out there man it gets expensive and it's a numbers game the more women you hit up the more women you can phone numbers gonna get the more you know pool you're gonna get you know you can't tell That's, me it's otherwise. not true i'm telling you other ones i'm telling you the less you spend the more pool you get <laughs> well i think your advice as far as love dude sucks to or girls but everything else, you're super knowledgeable, dude, and I really like your show, dude. Well, all right. Well, we don't have to agree, but uh, believe me, guys are following my rules and they're getting laid. Ralph on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm okay. Um, I'm so upset today. Uh, well, this is what happened last night, actually. My girlfriend, she told me that she's pregnant. How'd that happen? Uh, well, uh... She had a um, uh, this uh, birth control for the past uh, few months, you know, and uh, she told me that she has a birth control. Otherwise, I'm a kind of person, you know, I never want to take a risk. But she told me that she went to the doctor and she had a birth control for three months, like uh, like uh, like two months ago. And now, last night, she was like, "What kind of birth control was that? Did you find out?" No, I didn't. Because I have never heard of a three-month birth control. Oh. All right, let's start with that. Number two, uh, did that mean you didn't use a condom because you believed her? Uh, yeah. Because... But didn't I tell you always, always to use a condom and never to trust women when they talk about birth control? But how come some be like, she was like, I love you so much. And I don't and care what they say. You have to stop listening to that and do what's right and do what works. Um, and I, look, Tom, I never wanted to, you know, like, not use condom, but this is all... What do you mean you never wanted to not use a condom? Then why didn't you? I don't know. This is like... You don't so, know? So, like, see, Tom, I know, I know I've, I've been not doing right, but she told me she has this birth control. So what? 
You should still use a condom. Maybe she screwed somebody else and you can catch what she has. You should be using a condom 100% of the time. Yeah, but I tried. I did. I did. What do you mean you tried? Like, you tried? Like, oh, I did, but she was like, I don't like the condom. But I I, what did I tell you that means when a woman says, I don't like condoms? Yeah, well... I told you what that means. Do you remember? I know, Tom, but uh, this is what happened now. I, know, I told you when a woman says, I don't like condoms, what she's really saying is, I want to have your baby. Well, uh, And you I know it because you've heard me say it. I know, Tom. Yeah, I'm guilty for it. I mean, I mean, I mean I... why Why did you listen to her? Yeah, that was a big mistake of mine. Right, a big mistake of yours, especially since I gave you the tools. I told you what you needed to do and not do. Yeah, I know, Tom. And, and you I... thought you knew more than I know. And on top of that, I listen to you every day, you know. Uh-huh. Well, how did it happen? Yeah, so there was no reason to listen to what she said. I told you on the air, if she refuses to let you use a condom, you have to leave. Oh, Okay, so is there any solution for it now, Tom? A well, solution for it? Well, why are you calling me now? You had the solution. Don't have sex with women who won't let you use a condom. You had the solution. You ignored my solution. I know, Tom. I did have Now I'm supposed to help you after you ignored me before? Well, you are I getting exactly you are getting exactly what you deserve. I know, Tom. I told her I don't want it. And it's like... Doesn't matter what you told her. She's in the driver's seat now, pal. She's driving the bus. Now well, I, she's driving the bus, and you're a passenger. Hello? It doesn't matter what you told her. Yeah. Well, She's the boss uh, now, and you better get used to it, because until you are about 50 years old, she's the boss of you now. She runs your life. All, be if, all because you listened to her. But if, if, what if uh, she, you know, like, if she knows that if she, she have it, she will lose me? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because she won't lose you entirely. She'll be able to haul you into family court anytime she wants to. She will see you when you want to have visitation rights to see your kid, which you'll be a pussy, and you'll say, you know what, I want to get involved with my son. You'll do it, and you'll be seeing her all the time, and she'll have her pound of flesh. Well, she does not have my love, even if she gets... Doesn't to... matter. She has you one way or another. All right. Um, thank you. You screwed yourself. I gave you the advice, and you thought you knew better. I know. Yeah, I know. I really... I accept it. I mean, I did, I did not correct it all. I told you not to do that, and you did it anyway. I know. Well... Let's see. I, I hope, you know, something good happened because I'm not ready to have a baby in this stage, you know. Like well, that didn't stop you from having sex without a condom, did it? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right, Tom. I'm, I'm, uh, I told you I, I accepted, you know, like this is uh, what I did and I should, you know, like I should take it now. We'll see what's going to happen. Well, you could try a Hail Mary, but... Uh... That's about it. Have All you right. tried the Hail Mary yet? Probably not. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm I'm not going to get married, man. No, I'm no, not. a Hail Mary. Oh, oh. I I don't know, Tom. Well, hopefully, like, last night when she told me, I was like, I was shocked, you know? Like, I was like, how this happened? You told me that you You know how it person. happened. You know how it happened. Women lie about birth control. You couldn't be bothered to find out what kind of birth control she used, but with reckless abandon, you ripped that condom off and went for it. That's how it happened. You know how it happened. I know, but I was shocked because I trusted in her. Mom. But then, why were you shocked? Did I tell you not to trust women who talk about birth control? Did I tell you that? Yeah, you did. Then why would you be shocked? Exactly what I told you would happen did happen. Um, I don't know, Tom. Why are you shocked? Yeah, I was shocked because she lied to me. Uh, you, why were you shocked about that? Women but, lie about birth control. 
Well, even she, she she have the baby, she will not have my love it anymore. It doesn't matter. She will have what she wants. She'll have your baby, and she'll have your attention, whether she has your love or not. Now she's guaranteed you're going to be in her life for the next 18 years. Yeah, that's what that's what she was worried about, you know, Tom. What that yeah. she was worried about because she was uh, she had the fear to lose me, you know. Now well, and there you go. She got you to believe her when she said she was on some goofy form of birth control I've never heard of, and that you've never heard of. But could you be bothered to say, well, what kind of birth control is that? Let's look that up on the internet and see what that is. You couldn't be bothered doing that, now, could you? No, no. Right. That's my point. Yeah. So well, don't be shocked. That you you made this happen, pal. Okay, Tom. Well, uh, okay. This is what she did to me, and I will have. No, the no. This is so what I... you did to yourself. You did I this. I know. I did this to me, and uh, and and based off what she told me, I feel right that I never. You listened. never should have listened, but you did it anyway. You you yeah. believed her because you just wanted to get laid. Oh. Yeah, Tom, but I told you that even if she has the baby, she would not have my love anymore. Yeah, I, I've heard it four times. I've had enough. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likus Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's our telephone. <laughs> Don't forget, you hear us now six days a week, Saturdays 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific time. Monday through Friday, 3 to 8 p.m. Pacific. As you head home on 97.1 FM Talk and on our website, blowmeup.com. You can't get away from us, for God's sake. Experts say that. Birth rates are falling with the lousy economy. Abortion rates are up. Adoption rates are down. Stupid time to be having a kid. It's one 800 800 tom It's Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, quick story real quick. Um, I'm 21, and uh, about a year and a half ago, my ex-girlfriend of three years came to me and gave me the ultimatum. Either I put a ring on her finger and get ready to settle down and have kids, or that she was going to leave because she was already living with, uh, living with me at the time. Well, she came home to her surprise with all this stuff out on the patio and told her to get out. Well, I get a call from her about two months later saying, yeah, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean you're pregnant? And she goes, oh, don't worry, it's not yours, it's a real man. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And she's like, oh, by the way, we're getting married. Okay, that's fine. Well, I get another call about a year later from uh, her friend and asked me how I was doing. I was doing pretty good. Moved to San Diego, you know, I'm getting more out in the toilet seat now. And just out of curiosity, I asked how my ex was doing, and she said, um, not so good. She's living with her parents with her husband while I'm living it up in paradise in San Diego. <laughs> so I, I had to give her a little call and say, hey, how you doing? how's uh, that wonderful man of yours who's supporting you living with mommy and daddy? So just a little... So, Tom, you, you saved me a lot, man. I'm telling you. Now, I'm down here, and it's just, you've saved me so much money and so much, you know, a pain in my ass that these girls are. I am so glad to hear that, Jeff. I thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. I love the show. Thank you. Um, I just, it's an interesting topic, um, because, you know, last night I was, I was putting my two kids to bed and, uh, I, I just looked at them and, you know, I know what a mess the economy's in and, and I know raising kids is expensive. I pay $2,000 a month for daycare and, uh, you know, I make good money. I've had a, a lot of nice things in life, but I, I've got a one and a half year old and a three year old and I was just holding both of them in my arms and you know, they were so sleepy falling asleep and, and my son uh, looked at my daughter and just gave her a kiss on the cheek and put his arm around her and patted her and I, I just when I saw that it just made me think that no matter what I could lose my job I could lose everything but if I had those two uh, everything's just fine because uh, there's just something about um, children that they they make you realize that life 
is about a little bit more than just the uh, material things. I, I mean, I've had a well, lot of Well, uh, that, that's all well and good until you can't afford to feed your children or to house them or to clothe them. Well, life life is a complicated game. You know, you, you're not always going to have all kinds of money. But, you know, I, I live in a neighborhood of filthy rich people, and, and very few of them are happy. However, I've met people who have very little money. And they this, have by the way, I, I don't know how you can know whether someone is happy or not based on what they tell you or based on your own observation. I've okay, got man, money. I'm a multimillionaire, and I am delirious. And, okay, that's great. You're delirious. But do you think the people in the hills around you that you've met, your neighbors, I mean, are they? Do you, would you consider most of them happy? Or do they trade all of their time for money to pay their bills? Well, put it this way. Uh, many of them uh, don't work any more than you do. They just work smarter than you do. Well, you don't know my financial situation either. I'm so just you... telling you they don't necessarily work more than an eight-hour day. I'm saying that a lot of people have put themselves in positions uh, in life where they have to sacrifice most of their time to make money to pay their bills, and that's not... Well, that's not my neighborhood, okay? I, maybe that's other neighborhoods, but my neighborhood, it seems people work less hours, not more. Well, I'm just saying that... Most of my neighbors of are home during the day. Okay, there are plenty of people who so am I. have... Okay, there are plenty of people who have, uh, you know, money and are happy, and plenty of people who don't have money and are happy. But money's not doesn't make doesn't automatically make you. I never happy. said it's automatic. I just said you're more. By the way, they've done studies on this recently. You are more likely to be happy than not if you have money. That's a oh. fact, and it was uh, we read the statistics on the air for a recent study uh, of just that. Well, because we trade our time for money, and we trade money for pleasures, okay? And there are many pleasures in life. There are nice cigars, there are nice bottles of wine, there are nice houses, there are beautiful women. You know, you can trade your money for any one of those things. But what I'm saying is that uh, a child, yes, it's expensive to have a child, but it's also extremely rewarding. And, and when you... see, Yes, I, and what happens when you can't feed your children? What happens if you get into a position where you can't house them, or can't clothe them, or can't educate them properly? Well, out of necessity, uh, you know, there are people out there who do fail. Uh, I mean, but there are also other And right people. now, there's more people failing than at any time in our lifetime. Yes, there, there are a lot of people failing, and having children is very expensive, but it is not the end of the world. When, when you have children, out of necessity, you know, you may have to go take a second job. You may have to, you well, know... Well, now, now look who's working so many hours. Yeah, you may have to during rough well, times. I, I never I, have to do that. But what I'm saying is, if if your parents took your advice, you wouldn't be you wouldn't have the opportunity to play this game because you wouldn't be here. But, but then I wouldn't know the difference, would I? No, but I'm saying the rest of the people in this world and, and children are wonderful, and people who give them a chance to play the game of life are wonderful too. So it doesn't mean that people who have kids or kids. Are, I'm not are saying bad. they're good or bad. I'm just saying this is a very bad time to be having children. A very bad time. Let me get Bianca on here. Bianca, what did you want to say to Mike? Well, Mike, I understand what you're saying. I work as a nanny and I love children and I understand that once they tell you they love you and you see their little hands and their little feet, everything's all cute and everything. But I from what I'm hearing from you as a psychology major is that you had your children for mostly selfish purposes. My parents had me. Um, this was obviously around 30 years ago, and the economy was a lot different then. They had my sister two years later. Eleven years later, they had a baby boy. My father was a very famous screenwriter. We had millions of dollars. He became sick um, pretty much overnight. They uh, gave him 15 years to live, and he died in two years. Um, most of that time, twice a month, we were spending going to the hospital in ambulances twice a month. And the thing was is that once he was gone, we had spent every dime that we had, and we would have given it up to live in a trailer or anywhere with my father if he could have stayed alive. I'm not saying that we wouldn't have. It, it wasn't about that. It was the fact that once he was gone, as me, as the oldest daughter, if I had been a son, maybe things would have been different. Maybe things then he would have explained things to me. But nothing got explained. And we lost everything. And my family has fallen apart because of it. And I hate that this economy has come to this, that women have to know now to take birth control. I have been on Depo Vivera since the 
day I got my period, pretty much. I haven't had a period in 15 years. I don't, you don't think I want a baby? I want a baby more than anything, but I will not have one like this. Not for selfish reasons. Not to hold a little baby and look at a vision of myself and, and my wife. And I, and, and I think that you have to understand that, that you are very lucky. And I hope that nothing happens to you. And I hope that nothing happens to your children or your family or you and that everything goes wrong. But we were millionaires. Millionaires. We had three houses. We had five cars. We had everything. We flew on private jets. Everything is gone. My mother is an alcoholic. She lives in just God, you know, knows where. Doesn't talk to her. My sister has run off to New York because she can't. She there, there's no place for her in the family. My it, it, my brother, who never got to know his father, who had this child, all he wanted was a son. So. Can I say something? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Way too many issues for me to even think about giving any credence to anything you've said. You have you have more issues than any woman I've ever talked to. So I mean, I don't. Well, I don't know there. Why what you said has anything to do with me? Well, because if you're saying that you'll have to work a few, ex- what if you die? Was what I'm asking you. If you die, what will happen to your beautiful children? If your dad and- died. Are you okay? No. Of course I wasn't okay? okay when my dad died. Are you okay now? Well, considering yesterday was the uh, anniversary of his death, and, uh, I, today is not such a good day, no. Okay, but are you okay as a person? Are you living? Are you surviving? Are you are you in the game of life? I mean, just getting by. And my husband is a cinematographer. And we are just getting by in this economy. Just getting by. Okay. My I trust mean, fund was used to help my mother. It was given right back. All three of our trust funds were given right back because we had to pay off. My, we were millionaires. So you're like, bitter about your family situation and the way your mom handled her finances and everything. That has nothing to do with I don't understand what, what you're saying has to do with me. It has absolutely nothing to do with what I said. All I'm saying is okay, that... Tom, Dad, time, Dad do you, time, you get what when, I'm saying here? Is that if this guy goes like and, and, and bites it, then who's going to take care of this wonderful family that he has? Well, that's a very good question. I think that's a reasonable question. Die tomorrow. Well, you know, maybe you should consider that as one of the possibilities because it certainly is possible. Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Like It Show. Show. Look at it for God's sake. Coming to you from Hollywood at 1 800 5800 Tom. Oh, yes. The people who know better say that uh, in these economic hard times, uh, pregnancies are down, abortion is up, adoption is down. Makes sense to me. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Say hi to Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hi, how are you doing? Great. Great. Uh, I had called about the boyfriends that treat you like crap as opposed to the nice guys. And when I was in high school, I dated somebody that treated me like crap. And he really did. I had two jobs. He had no jobs. I had a car. He didn't have a car. And I had... A couple of guys, you know, asked me out. They were really, really nice people. I, I didn't like the really nice guys. And it, that sounds insane, but that's really how it is. With That's how I think it is with a lot of people. But the girls just don't want to admit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think that's the bottom line. I've been saying this for a long time. By the way, you notice he kept saying the same thing. He kept saying, women don't like being treated like crap. And I said to him, but he doesn't want to hear what I'm saying. I said, it's not right. that they, they, they like it. It's yeah. that they respond to it, that they give you the result you want. Right. Yeah. I, did, I went with him for almost three years in high school, and I had his friends even come up to me and tell me the things that he was doing behind my back. And one of them wrote a poem for me. And, you know, these are his best friends, and they're, you know, telling me basically that I shouldn't put up with it. But, uh, you know, I, it's not that I really like the real jerks, but I don't like the men that are 
too nicey nicey pull the chair out you know i just it was more of a like a turn on for the bad boy than the good boy <laughs> <laughs> and i know that sounds bad and women will hate me for calling but there's just something about the bad you know but when i finally did break up with him after crying many times when we'd have fights when i did break up with him it was three years later. He's the one that cried his eyes out and begged me to, you know, take him back and everything. So I did get a little bit of satisfaction in that. But <laughs> <laughs> well, by that so, time, he'd already gotten what he wanted. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I was a good girl back at that time. <laughs> so, but he, um, the last I heard, I haven't seen him in like eight years. But the last I heard about him is he was still with the gal. There was a girl that really liked him, too, and he'd always try to throw her, like, in my face that if I don't go do this, you know, then he's going to start. And, you know, and I put up with it, which is really down my wooden again. But the last time I heard is they're living together. He still isn't working. He doesn't have a job. And he's basically living off of her. So... I should have known better, but I didn't. But the myth, the, you know, the bad guy just appeals to me. You know, I don't want somebody that's going to cuss at me, call me horrible names, and be physical. But it's just the demeanor that I like. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why, but I, I know, like I said, women are going to hate me, but that was just what attracted me. So. Well, believe me, I know. I, I keep telling guys if you're a jerk, you're going to get what you want. If you yeah. are not a jerk, someone else who is a jerk will get what you want. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry, but the, the last guy that just called in, to me, he it's like he is trying to make his own self believe that what he was saying. Like, he was really, I noticed, defensive. I think he was looking for maybe some approval with, you know, I, I, he just, that wasn't very... That, you know, he just didn't, he was just trying to get someone to, to be on his side and agree with him. Chris, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Don't forget, you can hear our show now every Saturday from 2 until 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk. It's the Tom Likas Show.